Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Mags on the broadcast today. It's an all pundit show with Brian Wachter of the Retail Association, Matt Robinson from Argentum Partners, and former state senator Patty Farley. It's all coming up next on an all new Nevada News Mags. Hello, is this D&D Roofing? Yes, it is. How may I help you? You did such a great job on my roof. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. Oh, can I speak to your supervisor? Sure. How may I help you? I love your work. May I speak to the owner? I am an owner. We're all owners. Well, that's why at D&D we work so hard to keep your home safe and sound. Oh, no wonder. D&D Roofing and Sheet Metal. Local, employee-owned, here for you. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we have an all-pundit show going today with a great lineup. Former State Senator Patricia Farley is with us, Brian Wachter, Senior Vice President of Government Affairs for the Retail Association of Nevada, and Matt Robinson with Argentum Partners. Pleasure to have you all with us. Um, as we're starting the uh, Democratic Convention this week, uh, former Senator Farley, uh, your thoughts as we head into this convention? Um, I, you know, I, I'm excited to see what um, they put forward um, and I, as far as their overall plans and their ideas, because I don't think that that's really come through yet to the general public is what is a Biden pre presidency about? Um, what kinds of hopes and changes are, is he planning to um, present and to bring about the American people? So I, I'm very much wanting to hear from the Democratic Party on what the plan is. Um, Brian, that's rather interesting to hear a uh, Democratic senator now, or I guess an independent senator, but uh, who, caucus with, who caucus with the Democrats saying that at this point in time, she doesn't know um, what the Democrats' plan is. How does that strike you? Well, I, I think, you know, there's certainly been a lot of confusion and a lot of, you know, extracurricular activities during this election going on. And I think it's it's often hard to be able to kind of pinpoint and spend some time thinking about these topics individually. Um, I think for the Democratic Convention, what we're really looking for is the organization to pull it off. You know, how smooth does it run? Uh, are the speeches happening? We're only having two hours, I think, in time coverage for these conventions. Um, you know, and there wasn't too long ago, Sam, that these were, you know, must-watch television. Um, and so I think we've seen the role of, of the convention change over time. And so I think really it's going to be just which party or do both parties have the organization to pull off this kind of virtual con uh, convention? And what does that say for their ability to pull off a virtual election? You know, it's interesting, Matt, because... You know, uh, if you look at it from producing a television program, having nonstop wall-to-wall -wall coverage hours and hours a day um, is incredibly hard to pull off because you're basically saying the same things over and over. You got lots of people in there uh, that a lot of people don't really care about. You're looking for the headliners. Now, because it's gonna be uh, crammed into a, a, a limited window, there's an opportunity uh, for the Democrats in this instance and then the Republicans to really show off a great program. Um, what's your confidence level in the ability of the parties to be able to produce great television because that's what's gonna be needed here? But, you know, I'm not too worried about that. I, I think, you know, the most part at this point in, in, in the, you've kind of figured out how to 
how to do most of these things. What I'm really interested in is going to be the split between the progressive side and the more traditional wing of the, of the Democrat Party. Who gets airtime? Who, who is, uh, I guess, postured as, as the, the head of the party? Um, I, I read that it looks like AOC or Alexandria uh, Ocasio-Cortez is only getting about 60 seconds, um, which is interesting given that she's kind of the um, at least the public standard bearer of that that new wing of the party. So I'm going to be watching that kind of the the breakdown of of, of who's actually given time to speak. But I think we're going to be just fine in, in terms of streaming and, and, and having a good program. Um, Senator Farley, it was interesting on the Sunday shows to see um, Bernie Sanders. Um, it seems like there's obviously been a great deal between him and Joe Biden. Um, as to uh, Santa's position, he's not going to get everything he wanted, but he's, it certainly appears that he's going to have a strong role here. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, I think that the Democrats have to um, appeal to that base and keep that base on board. Um, what Bernie did with his followers is pretty tremendous. Um, and his followers are um, very much um, in line with him and support him. And I, I really think that it's smart for Joe Biden to reach out and have that relationship with Bernie, but um, it'll be interesting to see whether or not Joe's able, and that's, I think, what I'm waiting for from the Democratic Convention is to see how they're going to mesh both sides of the fractions of their party together and come out with a moderate, appealing plan that not only appeals to the Democrats, but also could potentially sway Republican voters to vote um, for a Biden-Harris ticket, and I think that's going to be the most interesting piece to watch for as the convention plays out. Um, Carmela Harris, uh, uh, Brian, um, what, what role does she play in this? Because, you know, with perhaps the exception of Sarah Palin, uh, vice presidential nominees have not really been big players. Um, your thoughts on her? Well, I, I think Senator Harris brings a lot of, and this will be interesting to say because I think she's a boomer as well, but a lot of uh, youthful energy to the ticket, um, especially amongst the four of them, right? You've got President Trump and Vice President Pence and, and uh, Joe Biden. Uh, they don't exactly, they're not energetic candidates. They're not people that you see kind of um, out there and, and really kind of this energy. And so I think Senator Harris has the potential to bring that uh, to the campaign. Um, I think she also, uh, it'll be interesting to see to Senator Farley's point, how the Harris presidential campaign issues match up with the, the Biden for president campaign issues. There are some differences when it comes to tax policy um, that haven't been reconciled yet. There's some differences when it comes to some criminal justice issues. Um, and so it'll be interesting to see what role Senator Harris is gonna play and what kind of Vice President Senator Biden or Vice President Biden envisions for her. Um, Matt, you know, in, in traditional, um, you know, runs, um, whoever becomes the vice president or vice presidential nominee uh, tends to fall in line uh, because they've agreed to be on the ticket. Do, do you think that's gonna be the case here or do, are you expecting fireworks uh, coming from Senator Harris? Uh, I don't know about if fall in line is a good way to put it. Um, I don't think she's a person that, that really does that. Um, I, I think you see a more collaborative uh, ticket with these two. I think she's a strong candidate. Um, I, I do think there are going to be some issues uh, brought up that are, that are valid about her past experience, especially given the conversation that's going on nationwide right now. Um, I think that's to a certain extent is a liability that um, that you know their team is either going to have to address right away or, or hope it hope it goes away. Um, but no, I, I I don't think she's a, a fall in line type of person, and I and I think he probably chose her for just that reason. Um, so we'll see what comes to that. All right. Well, we will look for some fireworks. Let's take a break. We'll come back with our all pundit show after this timeout. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Ahern Rentals began as Signal Gas Station on Las Vegas Boulevard. Founder John Ahern grew the business by offering rentals. His son Don built on John's legacy, growing Ahern Rentals into the largest independently owned American rental company with 89 locations in 30 states. Don also brought his experience and vision to equipment manufacturing with Extreme Manufacturing and Snorkel. 
Today, Ahern Rentals continues to bring its family values to a new generation. Learn more at ahern.com. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bar again because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our All Pundit show with Brian Wachter, Matt Robinson, and Patricia Farley. Um, Matt, let's talk about what's going on at Dieter. I mean, if there's ever been a state government disaster, this has to be it. Uh, what it are, are you optimistic that this is going to get resolved anytime soon? Uh, <clears throat> Well, I think, you know, I think uh, Elisa Caffaretta, uh, you know, coming to the table, I think that'll help. Um, but I, you know, I'm, I don't have, have rosy projections for that. I, I think you had, you had a, a system that was probably kind of ripe for issues anyway. Um, and, and then given the, the, the current situation, I, you know, I, I think Heather Corbulek did a, had a, made a valiant effort. She was a she was a great person to have at the you know at, uh, steering the ship for a while there, um, but I just don't know if there's a way to win this. And I and I think we you have to kind of you have to stop taking on water first, um, and 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 hopefully somebody over there can do that. But I, I you know I don't I don't think the situation looks very good. You know Brian, one of the things that Nevada is famous for is being thrifty in terms of its government, um, but. Are we looking at a situation where we actually do need to spend money uh, to update computer systems uh, when we get into situations like this, um, that it isn't a crisis? Well, I, I think you could say that fairly across every state agency that we have. IT infrastructure is something that we don't invest in. Most departments and agencies can't talk to each other, much less talk to their local counterparts. Um, and so it doesn't shock me at all that the Dieter's having some growing pains. I think we do have to kind of put this in perspective, right? We're seeing unemployment numbers that they've been the worst in history since literally we've been recording these numbers. And so to expect, you know, Dieter, which was already having, you know, some issues to be able to meet that challenge that really, you know, was uh, not something that you'd even kind of fiscally plan for, I think is, is a little bit uh, disingenuous. And the other issue you have is that we have outside third party criminal actors using stolen personal information. And, and I, it was me personally, I think Senator Farley put online that, that she had hers stolen as well. And so they used our information, including my full social security number to go on to Dieter and, and fill out the unemployment claim. And they've been paying thousands of dollars out to um, to someone fraudulently with my claim. And so you have that on top of an already kind of overburdened system. And it's really, I think, just exacerbating problems. Um, I have a lot of faith in Director Caffaretta. Um, I have a little bit kind of more curious about this strike force or task force. I don't know what we're calling all these different groups now. I think this one's a strike force that's coming in to, to really look at the issue. Um, and it'll be interesting to see what, what former Speaker Buckley can do to solve the problem because it, it is a particular issue. Um, and the other thing I think that's challenging for myself, for our companies, our members, is this was something that we were foreseeing in March. We knew when we shut down the economy that people were going to get unemployed, so much so that the federal government built a system to handle you know, that additional resource. So we knew this many people were gonna get unemployed. So really for me, my questions kind of go back to March when the governor made that choice what was the thought process there and with Dieter and what were they expecting? And then, you know, what more can they do to really try to catch up to this problem that's just ongoing? Um, Senator Farley, uh, you know, as a businesswoman, as you look at this, you know, what are your thoughts? I think because I was in the Senate and I knew that these systems were um, really 
antiquated across the board and un underfunded that for it to be a surprise to anybody that this was going to happen is is terrible but i think what's really painful is um the people that are legitimately filing claims and they can't even get a response yet brian's false um application of mine showed up on our desks right and yet I, I hear from people constantly who can't even get a call back or can't even get into the to the system to uh, make their claim so um, I think that's terrible and I, I think we can throw fancy strike force and names at this the reality is is I think there's got to be an investment and an investment quick to bring up another system that can start processing these claims um, and get them going so I would be investing in technology very heavily right now um, and trying to run a parallel system to get some of these problems resolved because now we're talking about people who are really literally days away from being homeless or not being able to access food or those types of things so as a business person again we pay into that system um, and um, I, my expectation is that the people who have paid into it legitimately paid into it and we paid into it um, be able to access those funds and that's a crime that we are where we're at today um, you know Matt all of us would wish for a magic bullet um, to be able to solve these problems right away. Uh, but government is a giant ship that turns around very slowly. So even if you put in all the money needed to get this system up to speed, it would still take, would it not, months to actually get it running properly. I, I mean, I agree. I, to, to put it in context, I mean, Medicaid has, has recently finished uh, modernizing their systems, and that was a three and a half to five year process. Um, there are similar systems, uh, I, I would assume, in, in, in terms of what they do. So then, then you get into a question of whether this new system is put together correctly, if it's really implemented the right way, if they had time to fully develop it. Um, I, yeah, that, I'm, I'm not sure about that. I think, that, you know, as, as Senator Farley said, you have to do something here. Something new has to happen. So we have to do something different that we haven't done before. Um, but the, you know, as, as everyone knows, timeline on state projects like that is we, we talk years, not months. Um, and I don't know if that changes just because we're in a pandemic. So I, I think that's a tricky one. Um, Brian, uh, just the last word on this. Um, but you know, does does the blame lay with previous governors and previous legislators? Uh, for not getting the systems funded and therefore up to speed? Or d does it get laid at the foot of this governor and this current legislature, or at least the people in power? There's plenty of blame to go around for everybody, I think. Um, and, and, you know, you, you take a look at certain priorities and, and how and why we've been raising revenue and, and where that goes and, and what that public discussion about revenue happens. Um, and it doesn't leave a room in the state budget for the issues that aren't as you know, interesting or sexy. And one of them is IT infrastructure spending. Um, and so we, we are going to have that issue. And it's really something that regardless of whether it was, you know, Brian Sandoval or whether it's Steve Sislak, I think uh, Governor Sislak will be held accountable if he doesn't use this as an opportunity to build something that works going forward. All right, let's take a break. We'll be back with our pundits after this timeout. Dimitri Prine here for Design Outdoor. At Design Outdoor, we specialize in all hardscapes, pavers, and walls you'll need for everything from wonderful small yards to full-blown outdoor living. And we only refer the best contractors to make your vision a reality. Our store and backyard are located at 11600 South Virginia, just north of DeMonte Ranch Parkway. Visit designoutdoor.com or call us at 851-9499. I'm men's rights attorney, Marilyn York. And because I represent men in all family law matters, women often call me gender traitor, woman hater, and even disgusting. So why represent men and target myself with these offensive monikers? It's simple. Children with fathers in their lives are six times less likely to drop out of school, 15 times less likely to go to prison, and five times less likely to commit suicide. So ladies, you can hate me, but please love your children more than you hate their fathers. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. A lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at REMAX Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. As you know, Reno is booming. 
Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with our All Pundits show here. Matt Robinson is here, Brian Wachter, and former state senator Patricia Farley. Um, uh, Patricia, um, tell us about your concerns about this leaking of your information and where that leak might have come from. You know, I, I mentioned earlier that we have um, friends that can't even get somebody on the phone to process their claim. And then here's my claim in my own hands. I'm, I own a business and, um, and the claim has my correct address, the correct spelling of my name, my social security, my birthday. Um, and I'd like to know how they got that. And so, you know, now I'm taking extra steps in a lot of different ways to make sure that my identity is protected and my credit isn't being arranged. And I still have never heard back from Dieter or um, the AG's office on what they're doing to protect my personal information. So, Brian, you were in the same situation here where people were making unemployment claims on your Social Security number. Where, where do you think this leak came from? Well, you know, so with the Retail Association of Nevada, we've been monitoring a lot of these issues since, you know, February, January. Um, and one of the things that occurred to us um, and came to our attention in April, actually, was that um, third party actors were using previous data breach information um, in order to have all of our credit histories, our social security numbers, our information. And then they were submitting claims um, to the state unemployment offices um, as, you know, good claims. And so they were, you know, full information. They, they had all of it. The only thing that was wrong is it was not me or it was not Senator Farley instituting the claim. And so I, I think there is going to be a lot of, of that type of fraud. Um, the, the hard part, you know, for, for lots of different reasons, but for, for kind of the economic reason, one, it throws off the unemployment number. Uh, we don't know, for instance, how many of those are fraudulent claims versus um, actual claims. And so we really don't know what the unemployment number is in Nevada. Um, and then going forward, we don't know how much of, you know, the $1.8 billion that was sitting in the trust fund was apportioned to people filling out fraudulent claims versus folks filling out actual claims. Um, and why I think this is going to be important is as businesses are asked to increase our unemployment tax yet again in order to refill the unemployment trust fund, is there going to be any security that our business owners are, are paying those taxes to be able to fund actual claims versus fraudulent claims? And what level of fraudulent claims can we expect? And I don't think that that's an answer that we have heard yet from Dieter or, or the state government. Um, I can tell you that the Retail Association brought this up with Director Reynolds and Director Brown um, on a conference call in April, and we really haven't heard any follow-up from it. And, and Matt, isn't that one of the problems with all of these issues is that Every agency, whether it's a local, regional, or federal, are so overwhelmed with phone calls. I was trying to put in a, an informational call to the IRS the other day on uh, a payment of business taxes, and I was on the phone for three hours, on hold, playing in the background, and impossible to get through. So I, it just seems like this is not going to get resolved anytime soon. No, and, and, and I think I, I, something's got to give, uh, especially over at Dieter on the staff side, um, that, that we're going to have to figure out how to get people over there, whether it's repurposing DMV employees or something like that. I, I'm not sure exactly what it is, um, but, but, you know, people are desperate right now. And, and like Senator Farley said, you know, in some cases, days away from being homeless. Um, and, and so to call in and spend and, and, and they'll spend six hours on the phone and then they'll they'll get hung up on um, or you know the line just drops or they get diverted to another number um, and it's just it's really demoralizing for people that are, are are in a situation that I think a lot of them never thought they would be in so hopefully something we can can happen quickly um, you know it was interesting as I was as trying to work with the Treasury website uh, I finally got into it I worked through to every single question that they asked and then finally got to the last page 
and it aborted my my whole plan. <laughs> I mean, it's just an insane situation. Uh, okay, uh, we've just got about a minute here left. Um, we had a conversation that uh, we taped for later in the uh, in the week, and uh, and the phrase was that the Republican brand in the state of Nevada has been destroyed. Brian, is that a phrase that you would agree with? I think destroyed is strong, but um, it is certainly in trouble. Um, and, and there are, I think, some immediate steps that need to be taken to rectify that um, if the Republican Party wants to have a viable future. Okay, quick response, Patty. Um, I don't think destroyed, but I, I definitely think they have to get it together um, and come up with a plan that's more appealing to more members um, and, and win elections. I, um, I think both parties bring something very valuable to the table, and I, I think the Republicans got lost somewhere. Matt, you get the last word. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with, with with them as well. I, I think destroyed is a, is, is harsh, um, but I do think that, as everyone else has said, there are some choices that need to be made. I think more on a national level, and then we kind of follow suit. But I think some things have to get sorted out pretty quickly. And that's where we have to leave it. Great show, great panel. Thank you all very, very much. We really appreciate it. And we'll be right back. A bird's eye captures its surroundings at different heights. At Brian Culp of Photography, we can make your imagination soar over buildings, parks, cityscapes, and beyond. Brian's images tell the story and get the job done. If you need a new perspective to tell your story, contact Brian today. Brian Culpa Photography. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hi, my name's Marilyn Miner, and I'm sure you'd agree that Nevada is a very special place to live. I was born here, and my husband and I have raised our family here. I feel it's a privilege to live and work in the Truckee Meadows. I especially enjoy helping my clients reach their real estate goals. Sometimes the smallest details provide the greatest satisfaction. I'd be complimented to talk to you about your next move. Call Marilyn Miner at Dixon Realty, 742-1280, or log on to MarilynMiner.com. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety, too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all of these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Nevada Newsmakers and become a subscriber. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching and listening.